we welcome you back to join us for this fifth Sunday of, of Lent, the Centre for Christian Spirituality. And you may have noticed a little difference in our background that we are in the chapel at the centre, the beautiful chapel here. So an added privilege that you join us here in this space and this place. As today we listen, first of all, to the reading from this fifth Sunday of Lent. A reading from the Gospel according to John. The sisters, Martha and Mary, sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory, and through it, the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he learned that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, let us go to Judea. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, where have you put him? They said, see how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand round me so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, untie him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. Again, another gospel focused on bringing people to belief and, as Jesus himself says, showing the glory um, of God. I think the focus here is on the resurrection of Lazarus or the raising of Lazarus, but there is a link to the resurrection of Jesus himself. It's interesting that Lazarus has to be untied, but in the story of the resurrection, all the bands that had been used to tie the body were, were folded neatly in, the, in the, uh, the tomb. So the point being made that Lazarus needs to be raised, whereas Jesus is raised in a different way. I think the important of the story is that if we believe, we will come to eternal life. I think the first application of, of, of the uh, resurrection from the dead um, was to apply it to themselves, the early Christians, when Paul said, um, if Christ be not risen from the dead, my faith is in vain. He was really saying, my faith that I too will rise with Jesus is in vain. So a very strong statement 
of the fact that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And Lazarus is, as it were, the means by which, is, by which this is proclaimed. There was never any doubt that this was going to happen. From the beginning, Jesus knew and what he was going to do. And when he arrives, Martha says, if you'd been here, it would have been different, but you can still make it different. And he does. So it really is a manifestation of his power, but really to show the people the glory of God and to bring them to faith. It's interesting, isn't it, in that particular passage, because we only use the shorter form, that after Jesus gets the news about Lazarus, Jesus doesn't seem to give a continental. He, he just goes off somewhere else doing other things, but then comes. And I find it a real source, in, in the face of death, a real source of, of comfort and of hope that deepens my own faith. And there's a word that's, or an image that's used there, of the stone. And it's had, it has to be rolled away in order that you can be um, able to, to come out from, from where perhaps one has buried oneself because of uh, things that overtake the faith experience in one's life. So I, I just find it a real source of hope in the face of death and the rolling away in terms of my own life of that stone that enables me to experience, to have the Lazarus experience of being called out or able to come out from where I may have buried myself in my life journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing that struck me about this, I kind of have an affinity with Martha and Mary and here the family is again and as the, yeah. David said, yes, this is a miraculous <coughs> moment, but it begins in a very family situation. Mm -hmm. And I think in another translation they refer to um, Mary and Martha, they're weeping, Jesus is weeping, his heart is pierced with this sorrow of, in a very family mm. situation. And so um, I suppose that's what is really um, just the very personal Jesus being involved in the lives of these people, mm. not in a big mass of people, but just these three people. Mm. Everyone's gathered around because they heard he's coming, so the townsfolk have all mm. rallied around to see what's going to occur. But that Jesus' revelation happens within the confines of this family. And, and that's what really touches yeah, right. yeah. On Martha and Mary, the thing yes. that struck me about them was that um, it's Martha that goes out to meet him. And at the end, it's the people who came to visit Mary yes. who are mentioned. Yes. So they're yes. mentioned individually right. yeah. uh, each time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm sorry. Well, you have heard David and Virginia and I share with you our response to hearing that story. We'd like you to take some time now to reflect for a moment on what it was in that story that has influenced you, that's welled up something within you that gives you hope and meaning and purpose. Let us listen to the story from the Gospel of the Fifth Sunday once more. It's a reading from the Gospel according to John. The sisters, Martha and Mary, sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he learned that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, let us go to Judea. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remaining, remained, seating, seat, remained set, seating in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. 
and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into the world. Jesus said in great distress with a sigh that came straight from his heart, Where have you put him? They said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man, but he could not have prevented the, this man's death. Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. And Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all those who stand around me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to him, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. I pick up something you said, David, about the contrast between the, or the connection between the resurrection of Lazarus, if, if you like, and the resurrection of Jesus, that there is a, a connection between the two. And, and I guess that leads me to think in response to this about the coming week. How can I be that source of resurrection to others in the, where I work, where I live, and if you like, where I play? So how can I be that kind of presence that, that gives hope and meaning and purpose and life? I think for me it was that family scene mm. of Martha, Mary and Lazarus and um, a reassurance that sometimes we pray and pray very hard for something mm. and it doesn't always look like it's going to mm. turn out the way you want but the reassurance that that praying mm. is what it's all about, That's that constant mm. contact. Yeah. I, I identified with Martha there, and Martha was saying that she believed in the life that was to come. And I think as you get older, you do tend to believe mm -hmm. more than that, or at least you are more conscious that you believe in that. Mm -hmm. It used to be said by the writers that um, you, know, you should reflect on death regularly, meaning then that, you know, why be ready because you could die any time. But as you get older, I think, it's, you reflect on death not so much because of that, but because it is something that, that is closer than it has been before. And I thought that I would um, just try to reflect on that scene with Martha, just in terms of one's own uh, mortality. Mm -hmm. Virginia and David and I have drawn something from the Word of God today that we might take with us into the week, a way in which we can make it a living word in our daily lives. We invite you now to take a moment or two to reflect again on that word and what is it you can take from it to walk with you in the coming week. We've reflected on something that we can take from the scripture of this Sunday and allow to become part of who we are through the coming week. But to do that, we can't do it alone. Let's take a moment to pray that the Spirit of God will be with us, knowing that the presence of that Spirit with us, those words, with God, nothing is impossible, will be realised in us. We come to the end of our time of reflection today and we thank you for being with us at the Centre for Christian Spirituality and extend to you once more the invitation to join us next week when we will reflect on the, the Gospel reading which will be of Palm Sunday. But as we come to the end of our time together, 
Let's listen prayerfully to the prayer for the fifth Sunday of Lent from the Eucharist. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. 